Well, hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Heli Cools, Heli Pad. Yeah, it is about time that I get back to work on that trailer. There's a couple of issues that has prevented me from doing that. Number one being the weather, where I parked it, it got a little bit mucky. So I wasn't actually able to go back in there, but now it's kind of dried out. It's time to get back to that trailer. You guys stay tuned. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get back over here because I don't wanna be accused of being a redneck. One of the things is, is that you uh, mow your lawn and you find a vehicle. <laughs> I mean, my other trailer is almost buried. <laughs> that one's a little bit taller, but here's the problem is I created one heck of a rut through here last time I was driving through with Malachi and I've just been filling it in with uh, grass clippings. Um, I know that that's, uh, that really isn't a whole lot, but that's all I had to kind of build it up. And I think over, a f over several years, I might be able to get some good compost and some dirt in there to help, uh, help get it a little bit more stable. But for now, let's go ahead and get that trailer. There's something I noticed when I just drove by, the bug. Look at the size of that sucker. He's huge. Dang. That is a big snake. For around here anyway, it's a big snake. He must be three feet long or better. Wow. All right, let's get her hooked up. Well, the trailer kind of sunk down into the, into the ground here. Even though I put some shoring down, it still sunk down in, so I can't get the trailer all the way up. But, not to fear. The trusty farm jack to the rescue. Yeah, see, even in the middle of summer, it's still pretty swampy out here. That's why I call it the swamp. Well, I thought about putting it in the grass to work on it in a little bit more comfort. But then I got to thinking, I don't know how long it's going to be there. So I better just keep it in the driveway just in case it's there for a couple of weeks. I don't want a big, huge brown spot in the lawn. All right, let's get to work on this thing. Let's start figuring out all these pieces and parts under here. See if I can get this air hooked up to these brakes. Hey, guys, several days later... <laughs> I know I've been helping my son with a circuits class that he has to do this summer. But several days later, I am finally getting back to this trailer. And I have found one thing here that's uh, quite nice. It is this line right here. 
and I'm going to show you where this line goes to and what I am planning to do with it. So if we follow it back, it is the one underneath this Eaton pneumatic part. Sorry about all the movement, but it goes clear along the rail, goes up into that little bundle. And I'll show you where it comes out on the back end. Just so you know where we're at, that is the rear axle, the back of the pumpkin. And if I go straight up, right there is where it goes to. Now it has a line coming off left and a line coming off to the right. And where does that go to? Well, it goes into this bundle and eventually goes up into the, the uh, axle where it inflates the tire. So here the line's coming in and there it is right there. It goes right to the hub which uh, that supplies the tire with, with the air pressure. Now what I can do is hook up that line to a pressure regulator and regulate, oh, about 75 PSI to that line. And I can keep these tires filled at 75 PSI. I think that's a win. That is only part, that is only keeping the tires uh, pressurized. Let's, let's work on finding where those brakes go to, shall we? All right, guys, here we are at the rear axle, and I am looking towards the rear of the vehicle. And as you can see up there, there is two relays, two brake relays. Now the lines that are coming in and out of all of this system here, you have several different types. One being a service line, which comes from the brake pedal, and that will be a very thin line. And you will have supply lines that are thicker lines because it's always supplying air back to this area. And then you'll also have delivery lines. Let's go ahead and point out some of those things, shall we? So this coming over here, this line right here, this comes from a, this is a supply line and it comes right from the tank. Now that's where the one supply line comes in. The other supply line is this one right here and it goes up into this component and a supply all the way over around here and supplies this relay right at this junction. So both of these have supply from two different tanks. Now the service line or what comes from the brake pedal, you have a service line coming in from up here and you have a service line coming from over here. This one comes from this component and it also has, you can see there's, a, there's a, a, a thinner line here. This comes directly from the brake pedal. The other service line comes from here. All around, goes around, and right into that spot right there, into that relay. Okay, so now you have the service lines coming from the brakes, you have the supply, which supplies the air pressure um, to the system, to the relays. And then you have the delivery lines that deliver the air to, uh, to the air brake canisters. The lower relay controls the brakes, the spring loaded brakes. So in other words, this is the parking brake that it controls. The upper one is exactly the same, although it has an anti-compounding uh, system on top. And basically what an anti-compounding relay is, is that it uh, doesn't allow 
the service brakes and the uh, parking brakes to act upon the brake at the same time because it could cause damage to the brake canister. So the bottom relay controls the parking brakes where the upper relay controls the service brakes. And that's why it also has service brake or signal going to the trailer components as well. So the lower relay, these two delivery lines, they send pressure to the air brakes when the plunger is pushed down. In other words, the brakes are released and that provides air pressure against the spring pressure to release the brakes. The top one is the service relay which supplies air pressure when the brake pedal is stepped on. So you have two lines coming off of it that supply uh, pressure to the brakes to also uh, interact with the, the uh, spring brake which allows the brakes to come on or when you release the brake pedal to go back off. Each of these have an exhaust port under here. That's the exhaust port of each of the relays. Each of them exhaust pressure out back because the pressure will come back up these uh, delivery tubes and then out that port. This goes back to the trailer. Because remember, this was a truck that I'm turning into a trailer. So here's one line that goes to the trailer and here's the other. No, I'm sorry, here is the other. So this is the, uh, that's the service line and this is the supply. You can tell by this is a thicker line, this is a thinner line. Uh, service, they want it to be very, very thin so that the air gets back a whole lot faster. Okay, so all of this goes to the trailer. You will also note that the trailer brakes also have an exhaust port right there. So when the trailer uh, plunger is, is pulled, the pressure is released right out of that valve. So you have two lines going to each side and what you have here is you have the line that goes into a T. So it not only services this canister, but then you have a line that comes over and also services this canister as well. Understanding what the heck is going on up there is really the first step in figuring out, well, where's my tank got to go and what lines get plugged into the tank? What is supply? Uh, what is the service line? And it's kind of mind boggling, you know, especially since you have double of everything and there's just that spaghetti rat nest of, of uh, pneumatic lines. It's kind of a little bit daunting. But through a little bit of uh, a little bit of research, I've been able to kind of figure it out. I hope I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. So I've identified the tank that I want to use. This was, I believe, one of the primary tanks. I think it was the uh, middle one or the large. I can't remember which one it was, but that is pretty much going to go in the exhaust um, area. This is where the the uh, muffler used to be. I think that's a really good spot for it. And all of the lines and whatnot are really close by, so it should be fairly easy to modify this and uh, slap that right up in there. I've already got ready-made brackets for it, so that's a win. Well, it was quite a hassle figuring out all of that stuff, but I'm glad that you came along with me. I hope that you learned something about your pneumatic system. And I know this is a truck. Used to be a truck and I've turned it into a trailer. So it's really crazy trying to figure out all of the components of it. It would be awesome if I had another trailer here side by side, but I don't. So I'm just gonna have to figure this out just plain on my own. But at least if you're driving an LMTV truck, you should have a pretty good idea of what is running around in that system. Um, it's always good to do a little bit of research to kind of figure it out, especially if you're having trouble with some of your brakes because it may just be a relay, it may just be the balancing unit, it might be something else. 
So it's always good to have a little bit of knowledge so that you know what's going on. Next episode, we're gonna start building this thing out and uh, putting up service lines and the emergency line and see if we can get some air pressure back through the system and do some troubleshooting to see if everything is working correctly and how I have it in my head because you know what, sometimes what I have in my head is just per garbage. <laughs> I admit it, I'm not a professional. So if you see something that I pointed out that's a little bit, uh, well, let's just say not correct, please point it out in the comments below. I really do appreciate um, the help and any advice that you guys could give, I really do appreciate that as well. Until next time, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there, and God bless. And there's Jacob in his habitat. The snake is still here, warming up. <laughs>